I typically work alone, so the concept of a remote-controlled hoist added to my engine crane was essential. With it, I can use my hands to guide the engine in or out, easily done with a pulley to slow the cable travel. It also allows me to have full directional control when maneuvering heavy objects like the crank or heads, even if I can lift them. It's about control, not lifting. My shop crane is the Economy Harbor Freight 2-ton that you can get for a discounted price on a routine basis. Northern Tool, Napa, and other companies sell the same one with a different color. This winch I had for pulling stiff blue spruce Christmas trees through a baler for netting. So it's what I had. I doubt this Harbor Freight is a 2,500 pound winch. More like 2,000. It comes from the factory that manufactures Spinnybilt, Super Winch, Polaris, and other winches from what I've read. And the design of the motor and housing seems to confirm that. But with a snatch block set up to reduce speed, the load will be less than 500 pounds when lifting the under 1,000 pound Power Stroke 6 liter. If I had to buy something, I'd be looking at the more expensive hoists. But I did test this with the 1,000 pound load at the farm with my backhoe several times, and it held. I really wasn't sure it would hold, and I'm not sure it always will, or if another example will. I'll repeat, these winches are not identified as hoists. They do not use a mechanical brake to keep them from reeling out. I'm just showing you what I came up with to help me. It would be best if you bought a hoist designed for lifting. A winch just uses its gears to hold. Hoists are more expensive because they have the brake to hold. A hoist can be mounted in the same location that I've done with this winch, but with a different bracket fabrication. So this is a do-as-I-say, not-as-I've-done situation. I've had questions about this since I showed this in threads and I found the concept very useful. So with some serious reservations, I'll show how I set this up. Again, it should be a hoist, not a winch. I had two and a half inch square tubing which fits into the boom, and a piece that was just over eight inches long. The wall is one quarter of an inch. I cut three sides to use one end as a mounting plate. One of the pieces I cut off I used as a bulkhead while keeping the opening for the cable to pass through. Since this was welded tubing, I had to do a little grinding to get the seam out of the way, or this fixture would stick in the boom. The standard lifting chain was removed, which is just held by a bolt. I purchased two Harbor Freight 4,000 pound lifting eyes. One I will use to slow the travel of the winch cable and reduce the strain on the winch. The second was because I needed a pulley. The axle for this pulley is one half inch, so a four inch grade eight bolt from tractor supply was used. I cut two pieces of one half inch copper tubing 0 0.8 inches long to keep the pulley centered in the slot. While I show a nut is installed at the back of the thread, I removed it later on. I just used the large washer and a locking nut on the end to fit the hook better. The cable feeds through the slot and then through the boom. If I had the winch in place, I would have had a devil of a time getting it through that opening in the mount. To prevent the winch from sliding out of the boom, I drilled a through hole in the boom and threaded the mount for a 6mm bolt. It could have been a quarter of an inch bolt too.
Since I use this winch for Christmas trees on the tractor and on the front of my garage door as a lifting device, I needed to install it for easy removal. I velcroed the controller and used rotating clips for the wire. The circuit breaker will get fastened with a wire tie. I don't need that getting loose and shorting out. The cables get bundled and held by a two-sided velcro strap. I also needed a battery which was what I was going to replace in a vehicle. But it wasn't too degraded for this application. A quick connect for the battery which is held with a big cable tie and supported with angle iron cut to fit. With this winch a 4 mm allen screw holds the cable but as we all know it's the wrap that holds the cable under force. Anytime you work with steel wire cable you need gloves to prevent any broken fibers from sticking you. When this cable is damaged, I'll be going to a synthetic rope. The voice of experience will tell you to pad these terminals or anything like it on your hoist to prevent you from getting a bleeding forehead. It took a few hits to the head to come around to the idea of installing this. As I stated in the beginning, for me, this has been a useful modification. It allows much better fine positioning control than just using the hydraulic ram. And I can do it while I'm guiding the object in place. It's the winch I had, so I used it. And with the doubling of the cable with the 6 liter, it's only being loaded 500 pounds. Thanks for watching and buy a hoist.